Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel once again. So today I got sent this NET 3D printer. This is the ET5 model number. We're gonna go ahead and get this unboxed, put together, test it out, and let's see how this bad boy works. So I got this all taken out of the box. So here are all the pieces that it comes with. So it looks like this is going to be a pretty easy build to put together. I'll just have to put the rail on top, plug in a couple screws, and that's about it. So I'll go ahead and get this set up and then we'll get this tested and see how this works. So as you can see, they put these rubber pieces inside the rail to stop it from moving during packaging. So. Right there is a really nice feature. And they're on both sides, as you can tell. So I'll simply remove those. Okay, so the printer is all set up and ready to go. I did already hook up uh, filament. So let's get this powered on. Okay, so as you can see, you have print, prepare, and setting. If we click on setting, we can move X, Y, Z, or the extruder, and you can set it by 0 0.1, 1, 10, whatever you would like to do. So if we go back, we can prepare. We can go to level, we can manually or auto level this. We can load and unload the filament. But let's go ahead and preheat this and we're gonna go ahead and start a print. So I'll set the temperature of the extruder to 215 degrees and the temperature of the build plate, I'll go ahead and set to 60. So I did already level this bed, so I won't actually go ahead and do it again, because there's no point. I just did not show that. But basically you just go to each point, stick a piece of paper underneath to where it's even, so you have that 0.1 millimeter gap. So this is done heating, so we're gonna go ahead and go to print. And I'll use their file that they have, dog. Scroll down and click okay. And you can see it shows the temperature of the heat bed and the extruder. And then this will start once it gets heated up to the right temperature. So I'll go ahead and let this print and I'll come back in about two and a half hours when this finishes. All right, everybody, so this has finished printing, as you can see right here. I will go ahead and click OK. All right, guys, so here's the print, here's the finished piece. As you can see, some of the detail just didn't come out how I expected it to. I thought it would come out better, but overall, it's 
I don't know, not great, but it's not horrible. I think I'll just need to tweak some settings just to get it a little more accurate and maybe I'll slow it down, slice it a bit differently, but it worked. So one of the things I really like about this is the touchscreen. It's very responsive. You can easily move X, Y, Z or the extruder and move it up or down with just a push of a button. So that's simple. Preparing it is easy, preheating it is easy, and printing, you just click the button. Pretty simple. You go ahead and turn this off. I do like how the power button is right on the side along with where you place the cord, and the SD card to put in is right near the front as well, so that's a definitely nice feature to have. One of the things I don't like about this is the mat. Once you put it on, it's kind of taped on and I'd have to peel this all off again. And it would have been nice if there was a magnetic mat to place on side you can, so you can easily take it off. And as you can see, this can kind of get a little scratched up if you're trying to remove a piece that has a lot of draft or a brim around it. So I think a magnetic bed would definitely be a better feature. I do like the dual rails for the Z-axis that moves up and down. The X moves easily, it doesn't wiggle or move, so that's definitely nice. Putting it together was quite easy, however, I think it could have been easier if this was already attached to it, and it wasn't, so I had to manually unscrew the motor to slide this on and then pull it back to get it tight. Otherwise, it was loose, dangling, and it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but not real difficult. I do like the auto leveling system. All I had to do was take a screwdriver and just kind of tighten it to where it would light up. So that was quite simple to do. I do like how all the cords are out of the way. They were easy to connect, and I can slide the rest back inside this case so they're out of the way and not dangling everywhere. So that was definitely a bonus. I do like how all of the cords were labeled for me. So it was easy to pop into place and, and know which one's which. So that, that was definitely nice. Otherwise I would have been guessing. So I'm glad they labeled it like this. I don't know if I would have this all exposed, but again, if I need to change something out, it's easy to just unplug one put a new board in if I have to and plug it back in. The one thing I don't really care for is this filament plastic guide wire. It's kind of, I don't know, I feel like it should be straighter or it should come from the top and go down and not really from the side. Cause as you can see, it's gonna go winding around and you risk breaking the filament if it does that. But you simply guide it through here, it goes in and it worked. It's, I don't know if I would have it this way in the future, but not a big deal. This was quite easy to put together. It was just a few bolts right here and on the side and a couple underneath to hold it all in the place on both sides. So putting this together did not take very long. The hardest part was just unscrewing these bolts, getting the cable on there, and that was about it but it probably took maybe 20 minutes at the most, so not bad. So overall, what do I think of this machine? It's a decent machine. I do like the big build size, which is 300 by 300 by 400. Um, the print didn't come out the greatest right off the bat as I'd hoped, but not a big deal as I'll just tweak the settings and change it based on what I normally use and I'll, I'll re-slice something else in the future and get it, but this is the, the Anna ET5X. I will put a link down in the description of where you can get this. And guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out each week. And as always, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.